Ken Levine is CEO of Exetium. Tell us a bit about yourself, Ken. Yeah, I've been in the cybersecurity space now since uh, 2006. Uh, this is my fourth uh, CEO gig of a, of a cybersecurity company. Uh, prior to that, I was in the network infrastructure space for, for a, a decade or so. Uh, and um, I just really, really enjoy kind of smaller type companies and, and trying to grow them, uh, particularly companies that have some compelling technology. So Ken, why does the cybersecurity market just keep growing? It's a great question. Uh, it's one of the only markets I can think of where you spend more and you become less secure. <laughs> you, you, get, you get less of what, you, of what you actually need. But the problem is so pervasive, the problem is so complex, uh, that the solutions to the problems are also therefore complex. And you know, you've got an adversary here, you've got the bad guys that have essentially, that essentially they have companies with like bonus structures and termination agreements and all of this, uh, just like regular companies would have, but they're, they're doing the hacking. They have, they have companies that, that they're providing bonuses for people that, that do hacks. So the, the criminal element is, is so pervasive and they only have to be right once and we've got to be right every single time. And the result is you've, you've got to keep spending. You've got to keep, you know, you've got to try to keep pace and, and you know, try to, try to outsmart the adversary or, or at least try to out-technology them uh, because the damage, you know, continues to escalate in terms of the damage they can cause. Is there any end to what organizations are going to need to spend to protect themselves in future? I think that it, it, at some point the incremental spend has to, you know, has to, has to level off. Um, but I think it's, it's so much about so many tools are coming out. There's so many new vendors in cybersecurity. Integrating them into a single solution that will work for, for a customer or an enterprise becomes so complex. Um, and and you know, the, 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 I think the, the human element of it is, well, if we're not quite secure enough now, let's add. And so I think that's going to continue to kind of build, but you know, at, 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 you know, at some point, um, you know, I think it's fixed in terms of how much of the overall IT budget cybersecurity will, come, uh, will become. But uh, you know, the, when, when the repercussions of being breached go higher, so does your potential cost to, uh, to solve that problem. So let's talk about Exetium. Why does the world need another cybersecurity vendor? What we're trying to do is, is, is fundamentally uh, invert kind of the formula that, that is kind of in play today, which is particularly endpoint security where, where Exidium is focused. Uh, we rely, the industry relies on detection first. And detection is fallible. There's, there's no way to detect 100%. It's a mathematical impossibility. So what do you do when you've got unknown, potentially malicious malware running in your network? And we guarantee, the whole industry would, would agree with this, we guarantee that that's happening in every single company of any size right now. It takes time to detect that. Sometimes you can't, you, you can't ever detect it um, because if the malware doesn't declare what it's trying to do, you, you don't know what it is. So rather than relying only on detection, we've kind of flipped it and say, if we can stop the breach, if we can prevent damage from the breach, we still can't stop malware from getting into your network any better than anybody else can. But what we can do is make sure it never executes, it never does any damage. And that's a, a, you know, a, a really a fundamental shift in, in endpoint security. We're, we're, we're saying prevent, then detect, versus right now we have detect and detect. What is zero dwell containment and why do people need it? So uh, the, the, the notion is that uh, unknown malware, the longer it sits on your network, the, 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 the more dangerous it is. Uh, it used to be that it could take malware months to grab hold of what it needs to grab hold of in order to execute and cause, and cause problems. So, so the longer it dwells inside your network, the more dangerous. The dwell times have continuously come down where malware can execute and start causing damage um, you know, in, in, in hours. Um, so the idea is, is how do you make sure it doesn't dwell at all? 
And that's what our zero dwell containment is about. It's about taking anything unknown that's coming into your, in, into your network, quarantining it until we have a chance to figure out what the heck it is. And therefore, it never dwells because it's never there. It's, it's, always, in, it's always in its own containment. And that's how we prevent any damage from, from occurring. So, Ken, what is it exactly that you're announcing at NetEvents here in San Jose? We're announcing that the zero dwell containment that, that we just spoke about, that's now licensable on its own. So the significance of that is we have a full endpoint. We do antivirus, we do EDR, we do um, um, host intrusion prevention. So we have a full endpoint platform. But not every customer out there, either because they're under contract for another couple of years or, you know, or they have uh, you know, an embedded system that they don't want to displace, but they want this zero dwell containment. They want this, this damage prevention piece. So we've now certified um, nine different endpoint vendors that we can run compatible. So if you've got a CrowdStrike or a, or a Sentinel One or a Microsoft Defender implementation right now and you're using EDR or you're using their endpoint, keep it. But we can just layer in on top of it. So we, we now have kind of two, two points of entry. We can, we can ride on top of what they've got and it's a relatively frictionless way to, to, to bring this, this technology to more people. Um, or of course, we, we compete on the whole endpoint as well. Exetium sells its own EDR platform, so why are you giving away the thing that makes your product unique? Isn't it a bit like Coca-Cola licensing its recipe to other soda makers? We've thought about that a lot, and, and I think barriers to entry into markets play, play a role. And I think at the end of the day, while we provide EDR and we have all of those platforms, our value to the industry is this zero dwell containment. That's what nobody else has. And in a way, we would argue EDR is it's almost commoditizing now. And, and it, it's fabulous. It gives you great visibility. You know, detection is better and better every day. It's just, again, it will never be enough. Um, so we don't, you know, we, we don't want anybody to throw out EDR. And you can have ours if you want. But the, 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 the zero dwell is where, really where we think our value on, on the endpoint is. And so, you know, we, we charge more for, you know, or we charge a higher percentage for that than we do for the entire endpoint because that's where we feel the value is. The AV, the EDR, it's really this. So, so we feel like what we're really doing is we're, we're disabling functions that our competitors are providing. Um, that's all we're doing differently and just letting them take advantage of, of, of the zero dwell containment. We've got the international tech media at this event today, Ken. So what is it that you've got to tell them? We've always had a large global presence. Uh, more than 50% of our business is coming from, uh, from, from various international uh, uh, geographies. And so we're announcing a number of partnerships we, we've, uh, that we've developed uh, over the last six plus months. Um, a lot of them are now kind of ready to go. You know, it takes some time, of course, to to, to, you know, to get the whole sales motion down and everything, but we have some, some fabulous companies um, that are you know, ready, to, ready to take this unique messaging to, to their customers. Um, so we're announcing partnerships in, in, in Brazil. We have um, uh, partnerships in uh, Europe and Asia, and you know, just we're, we're, we're really excited. We're, we're, we're really excited about what we can do in the international markets. Finally, Ken, what can we expect to see from Exetium in the next year or so? What are your immediate goals? There's kind of the business goals and the, and the technology goals. On, on, on the business goals, we, we just want to establish ourselves as, as a market leader, as somebody that's trying to, to disrupt the market that needs disruption, but doing it in a um, but actually doing it in a non-disruptive way, if you know what I mean. So we're just, we're just trying, to, trying to bring that technology to market. Um, and then on the kind of the technology strategy front, we're looking at extending this containment idea to the cloud, to the network, and kind of do containment any, uh, you know, everywhere. And we think that will, that will add, because there's a number of, of, of egress points now in, in networks, the, the attack threat surface, gets larger and larger all the time. You've got uh, new devices coming on, you've got IoT, you've got you know, lots, lots of other areas. And 
So what we want to do is to be able to bring this kind of this prevention first um, technology and, and philosophy uh, to, a, to a broader piece of the market. Ken Levine of Exetium, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.